Good morning everyone, Elise from The Painted Brushing Co. Um, as the description said, we are introducing you all to Pure Eco's newest product, which is their hemp salve this morning. Um, but while I wait for a few people to jump on, we've got two tables or one table and a cabinet that we're doing today. So um, I thought we'd do a quick stain on this table so that we can then wax over the stain as well so that I can show you the wax over a um, over raw timber and over a stained timber so I can show you that difference as well. Um, I'm so excited for this product so um, we're just going to get started. Um, I apologise for the background noise. I know Facebook picks up a lot of background noise in lives. Um, we are open and the outside doors are open as well um, and it's it's what day is it? Thursday. It's truck day and it's loud. So I apologize for the noise. All right, so first off, we're gonna start this table and then we're gonna come over here to this cabinet, which I'm so excited about. But let's start with this table. Cute little Demi Loon, nice solid timber piece. It has got this incredible timber on it. Um, and I've painted the table with um, a few different blues. The base is a custom mix and then We've got some Pure Eco Reef. There's, what else did I use? There's some Harbour. Um, we've got Cloud, which is the white. Uh, there was another color as well. I think it might've been Euclid. I'm just like using up little bits and pieces at the moment, but <clears throat> the base color actually, even though I mixed it, it ended up very, very similar to Reef, um, which it happens, it's fine. <laughs> Um, and, but I just wanted a little bit of variation without being too much. I have used silk finish on the base, um, so I don't need to seal the base or this back piece. Um, can if I want to, but obviously not necessary. But we'll see how we go. I might end up sealing it anyway. So the top, beautiful timber. I'm not 100% sure what it is. The whole piece is this same timber. Um, it's a really nice solid piece, but I'm finding it's just a touch to red. Now the easiest way to see what colour your timber is if you were to just um, wax or like clear wax or oil it, spritz it down with some water and that's the easiest way and you can see how it's quite red, quite pink. That is the easiest way to sort of see what kind of colour you're going to be working with if you were to just keep the timber with an oil or a clear wax. So I'm very gently going to spritz it down and we are going to stain it with Pure Eco Stain Glaze in the colour Whisper, which is the white. The Whisper is going to take out some of this red while still keeping it really quite nice and natural. Um, sometimes I go straight onto the raw timber, other times I will slightly dampen it first. This just helps our, our um, stain glaze move around a little bit. So I'm just starting with this while I wait for a few people to jump on. And I figured I was gonna do this anyway, so I figured I may as well show you all. So this is Stain Glaze Whisper, which is white. And my favorite way to apply our stains is with a sponge applicator. And I'm also just gonna give that a little spritz. These are our Mr. Bottles. Um, they're, I think, $14, and they're absolutely brilliant. I highly recommend them. So we're just a little bit damp, it's like just damp. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of stain. Don't need heaps, it's probably more than enough for this whole tabletop. And all we're gonna do, just going back and forth, the direction of the table, making sure I get these edges. So this is gonna keep it nice and natural looking while still having that beautiful timber showing through. I do really like the color of the timber. It's just a touch too red, I think, against the blue. And I think it was just not quite, it just wasn't quite doing it for me. So Stain Glaze is water-based. There is no smell. I am inside the shop right now. There's no smell, I have no issues at all. I am 34 weeks pregnant, 
No issues at all using any of these products while I'm pregnant. No issues using any of these while I'm around my children. They're all natural, they're eco-friendly, and I love that when they can be, they're all water-based as well. Obviously, the only things that aren't water-based are the waxes and the oils because they obviously can't be. So we're just really gently going over that a little bit more on the edge of my sponge so I can get all that trim. I've just popped a bit of tape I use frog tape. I get asked all the time what tape do I recommend. I recommend frog tape. This is their low tack tape. It's a little bit expensive. You can get it from Bunnings. Um, but I do really, really like it. Um, I find it sticks really well, particularly if you're doing any sort of line work as well. Or, oops, oh, it landed the right way up at least. Any sort of line work. There's still stain on the floor, but that happens. <laughs> Um, line work or anywhere where you just don't want to see any bleed through. I do really, really like it. Now, we're just going to, liking that, I'm going to spritz it again really, really lightly. I'm going to use the other side of my sponge, so the clean side, and I'm just going to rub that back and forth. And by spritzing it, I've reactivated that stain. And we're just working that stain into the timber a little bit and we're also removing some of that excess. Being careful when you go around edges like that as well that you don't end up with big lines. So that's all I'm doing. So nice and light and we're going to let that dry while we wax this other cabinet with the hemp self and then we'll come back and if it's dry, I'm hoping it will be, dry enough. You just need to wait for it to be dry. Um, you don't have to wait any huge amount of time. Like you don't have to wait days or hours or anything like that. You just, it just needs to be dry before you wax it. So, done. We've got a few people watching. Hello, welcome. Oops, throwing things away. Let's go over to this other cabinet and check out the hemp self. Let me move some things as well. So, I'm going to move really really excited about this cabinet how beautiful is she I um, I brought this one at an auction and I knew straight away it was just one of those pieces I had to have it and um, it was just it was just cute it was a little bit different you don't see a lot of them um, I believe it was originally used to hold records or sheet music, something like that. I'm calling it a music cabinet. It's got fully adjustable shelves. Um, the inside has been painted with pure eco silk finish in fossil. So this, that's this lovely gray inside. Um, the rest of the cabinet, including this part of the door, has all been painted with a custom mix, um, simply because I didn't have enough of, um, what was I using? Pure eco sugar cane. I, I only had like, 50 mil left in my jar, which wasn't enough to paint the cabinet. So I tipped in some gum nut, um, there's some forest, there's some fern, there's some eucalypt. I had like all these pots that only had like a little bit left in them. Tipped them all in, mixed it up. Uh, it was a little bit too minty. So I added some fossil to it as well. And we got this really, really beautiful color, which um, it looks really blue on camera. It's not as, blue or as green as what it looks it's quite subtle a um, little bit different to uh, do I have one there there we go to um, pistachio and what's our other colors pistachio meadow and serenity which are the pale greens in the pure eco range oh, that's not any of them that's a completely different color what have I got here that's serenity and pistachio so a little bit different, not a huge difference as you can see, but just enough. Um, I think it's got a little bit more blue to it than the green. Um, but really, really pretty colour. The door, uh, if you've watched any of our reels or videos lately, um, I used Perico Eco Stripper on the door and revealed this beautiful um, inlay, which is just gorgeous. It was there. I could see it, but it was very, very hidden. 
It's got a lot of different color timbers in it, which I think is just incredible. The workmanship in this is stunning. Um, so I used Pure Eco, Eco Stripper, got the orange stain off that. I just sanded the top, I didn't bother stripping it. Came off really easy, but I didn't want to sand this because I didn't want to damage the stripper. Um, so, um, yeah, this is the cabinet. I'm so excited about it. So we've got, it's called uh, Hemp Cell. So this is Pure Eco's newest product. Um, it will be arriving at the end of May, I believe. Um, I think they're just waiting for labels or something. So it's coming uh, a few weeks away, but we're almost there. As you can see, I'm one of the very lucky guinea pigs um, that got to try it. I've been asking for this pretty much since Pure Eco um, started. I've used other hemp uh, waxes in the past. I've always loved them. I love hemp oil. Um, I love wax and I love the combination together. Really, really, really nice product. So I was really excited when LJ asked if I would be a guinea pig and um, and use or try her new formulation. And I love it. She nailed it. Um, it's really, really nice. So we're going to talk more about this in a minute and we're going to wax this. Uh, is the door panel wood? Yes, it is. Um, it's a ply, I think, but it, um, which is quite common for this sort of thing. It is timber, and then it's got the inlay, and all this inlay is timbers as well. You can um, see the timber grain in the inlays, and it's really, really, really well done, I must say. Um, it's definitely... Somebody was very, very talented when they did that because they... It's just beautiful. Um, I've done a few videos, close up showing it, um, that really show the detail in it as well. So I'm excited to wax it and watch it really, really come to life. So uh, Pure Eco's Hemp Salve, beautiful product. It contains hemp oil and then it contains all natural waxes. It does not contain any beeswax or animal byproducts. So it is vegan as well, which is really exciting. I know a few of you um, in the past we've stopped hemp waxes have loved it because they are more often than not vegan as well. Um, so to apply, use a brush um, or a lint-free cloth. Completely up to you. If you are doing a lot of waxing, I do recommend a brush. Um, if you're doing a lot, a lot of waxing, then I do recommend... got a wheelie chair in here and it's like the best thing ever. Um, I do recommend a, um, what do we call this? A, oh my God, pregnancy brain's got me at the minute. Um, a wax brush. Uh, these are fantastic. And if you are doing a lot of waxing, and I do have heaps of these, um, can I find any of them? No, but they are fantastic if you are doing a lot of waxing. I do recommend them. They are a little bit pricey. I think they're $49 on our website. Um, but they are brilliant. They, they are designed to do lots of waxing. These brushes, while great, they do fall apart. This one's probably down to its last legs. The bristles are really starting to fall out now. Um, so these are great if you're just doing a little bit here and there and sort of playing around and trying it. But if you um, are doing a lot of waxing, I definitely recommend a better quality wax brush. Um, and I prefer to use a brush on timber versus a cloth to apply the wax because when timber gets wet with the wax or with water or um, even stain, the fibres stand up completely normal. Um, it's just how they react with it. Uh, so we use, I prefer to use a brush because the brush doesn't catch on the fibres, whereas a cloth often does. For buffing, lint-free cloth. Um, I love microfiber cloths. I know some people don't like the touch and the feel of them, um, which is fine. Just find something that works for you. These ones are the Aldi ones. They come in like a 50 pack or something, or they did. I don't know if they still do. I think the last packs I saw in there were heaps, heaps smaller. Yes, I will post this up on our YouTube as well um, afterwards. And I'm going to edit it down to just the hemp wax part as well so you don't have to watch the whole thing to find the important bit that I really want to show you. Um, yeah, so 
these cloths are fantastic. There's obviously there's a lot of different um, manufacturers out there of the microfibers, but I do find the Aldi's a really, really good quality. Um, I've used some other ones and they've just sort of fallen apart, but these ones, I like these ones, they're good. All right, so this cabinet, I'm pretty certain the timber is cedar. It goes very, very red. Um, it does look like a cedar to me. If you know otherwise, let me know. But let's use our wax. We're gonna start with the top. And I was super clever yesterday thinking, oh yes, I'll get the door on now. Um, and then realized afterwards that I still need to wax the door. And now to wax that, I either have to sit on the floor or crush this belly <laughs> to do it. Um, and the baby does not like when I bend over that much, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> All right, let's bring you closer, nice close up of this beautiful top. I'm actually going to bring the camera up because I really want you to see this wax in action because it's so, so beautiful. Let me bring you a little, where are we? There we go. All right, so this bit here, I just have my cloth sitting there. There's wax already on it. It's just started to soak into the timber. It's fine, don't stress. And there's a bit of dust there as well. So. For your wax, all you're gonna do, get some on your brush. You don't need a massive amount. And it does not matter what direction you can you go in. You can go against the grain, you can go with the grain, any way you like, whatever's comfortable. And you're just going to rub that wax in. Doesn't matter if you miss bits, you just wanna do the best that you can to sort of get that initial layer on. And then I'm going to show you my favorite technique with um, waxes and oils as well to get that really lovely, smooth, baby bottom smooth finish that we all love with timber. So you're just gonna brush it on any direction you like. Scoop it up. This timber is quite thirsty. It's quite dry. So we're going to use a little bit of wax but this is used, been used on a large dressing table, um, the whole thing, including over the chalk paint. Um, and it's also been used on a um, smaller bedside table as well, over the whole thing again. Um, and you can see I've only just sort of started to make a dent. It's a 200 gram jar and it is $35. These are now up on our website for pre-order as well and stocks arriving at the end of the month, I believe. Not far away, a few weeks. So, you just want to oops, brush it on all over. As I said, doesn't matter if you miss bits, you just want to get it on there initially. And then you go to buff it. And when you buff it, that's when you'll really start to spread that wax around. Now, I love hemp wax because it's got the hemp oil in it. Hemp oil is incredibly nourishing for timber um, and overstained timber, and it's fantastic over uh, any sort of porous paint as well. So chalk paint and milk paint, it's absolutely brilliant on. Um, hemp oil goes through a very natural process where it um, reacts with the oxygen in the air and it hardens. And that's how you get a really durable, long lasting finish. That's also super easy to reapply and touch up if you ever need to. I have hemp oil on my own dining table at home, which is used for everything from occasionally being a dining table to being used as a dump zone and a workbench. Um, I've painted furniture on it and everything. It's starting to get a little bit dry, but there's no marks as such on the timber, which is what you want out of a really good quality hemp oil. And then the combination of waxes makes application really easy. And then, of course, we know wax is really, um, really hydrating and really protective for your timbers as well. Um, so you've got those two beautiful, com two beautiful ingredients, which just makes this just an amazing product to use. All right. Now, this is my little... This is my favourite way to finish any timber stained or raw using a really fine sandpaper. I've got 1,200 grit. Remembering the, excuse me, 
excuse me, truck, can you go past? Um, remembering the bigger the number, the finer the sandpaper, so you want something really, really fine. Now, you're just gonna sand. Again, when you're using one this fine, it doesn't matter that much on the direction, but I do like to try and keep with the direction of the grain, which is the lines in the timber. And all you're gonna do before you buff is just really lightly Don't forget your edges. Now you can have more wax on here if you want, a larger amount, or you can just sort of do your normal nice thin coat. It's really up to you with this technique. But this amount's fine. And you can really see how beautiful that timber is. I don't know how well the camera is showing it, but we've got a little bit of shine as well, which I love. And we're just going really lightly. I'm not using any sort of elbow or pressure in this. I'm just letting the sandpaper do it. Really, really lightly. So sort of run your hand over it. Anywhere where it feels a bit rough, you can go over it again. But when you buff it, you'll quickly sort of see and feel if there's anywhere that needs a little bit more, a little bit more sanding, a little bit more encouragement. So grab your cloth. Um, I'm just gonna try and pick a semi clean side. And you can keep using your cloths over and over again until they get, eventually there, there'll just be so much wax on there. It's just not gonna do anything. Don't put your wax cloths in the washing machine, um, but you can soak them in some boiling water which can remove a lot of the wax and then let them dry and then you can keep using them as well. So nice gentle buff. I'm just sort of, I like to initially just go over it with one section of my cloth, remove that initial layer. And then I like to move my cloth around a little bit. So more so that I'm not just spreading that wax out more and more and more. And this way I can make sure that I get that really nice, really, really nice buff as well. So you just want to buff it and your touch is your best friend. Keep buffing until it does. It shouldn't feel waxy and wet. Um, you'll have a little bit on your hands, of course, but it shouldn't feel like there's a layer of wax on there. It should just feel really nice. Now what I'll do is I'll leave this overnight and I'll come back tomorrow morning, see what it's feeling like. I'll stage it, I'll list this for sale today, um, but I will come back tomorrow morning. I won't let it go before then. Um, and I will give it another quick little buff just to make sure any wax that's still sitting on that surface is removed. Obviously we don't wanna be leaving wax on the surface. Eventually it will become a bit of a sticky mess and it's not very nice to leave that there. Um, so you just wanna be making sure that you're removing all of that excess and anything that's sort of still sitting on the very surface after 12, 24 hours, it's not gonna be soaked in. So you're fine to give it that second buff. Now, I wish you could touch this because it feels amazing. That sand has just really smoothed it lovingly and it feels really, really nice. So how gorgeous is that? All right, let's go down and let's do the door. So excuse me while I move you a second. I should have left the door off. And I'm annoyed at myself for not leaving it off because now I've got to do it like this. I can't get down on the floor because I will never be able to get back up again. Right. If you've got any questions, let me know. If you're watching this afterwards, let me know. Um, if if you've ever got questions, please don't hesitate to ask in comments or send me a message um, or an email or give us a call. Whatever your favorite form of communication is, um, I'm always happy to help. All right, so I don't need to get wax on the paint because I've used silk finish, silk finishes all in one, um, which means it's got the built-in top coat and I don't need to worry about 
ceiling. Um, in saying that, not the end of the world if I do get paint on my wax. Now, it probably helps if I bring you down a little bit closer because you are awfully high up there. Oh, that's me. Hang on, it doesn't like coming down that far. <laughs> there we go. Now you can see a little bit clearer. I'm going to drop it down that little bit further. I know, it's annoying when people move the camera when they're alive. I get it. It annoys me too. Now you can see what we're doing. That helps, doesn't it? Okay. So, we're doing the wax over the door. Now, because we have stripped this, um, we've stripped a lot of that, um, stripped a lot of the moisture out of the door as well, so it is a little bit dry. So the wax is also going to help um, hydrate it and protect it. So it's going to make sure that's beautiful for many years to come. It's gonna stop the timber from cracking over time. If I was just to leave this and not put any sort of finish on it, um, eventually it would just start to crack. Um, particularly with something that's got inlays in it. You see it all the time. They start to crack over time because they don't have that nourishment. They don't have that hydration. And you can just see that timber coming to life underneath. Whoops, let's not scratch my fresh paint. <laughs> and uh, coming to life under this wax. It's just breathtaking, particularly this um, inlay. You can see all the different colors really, really coming to life. And I'll bring you nice and close in a minute. And I will show you how beautiful it is. So we're just wiping that wax all over again. It doesn't matter what direction you go in. Just get it on there nicely. Now again, we're going to use our really fine sandpaper. And we're just really, really gently going to give this a nice fine sand. I would never ever sand something with an inlay like this with like 80 grit, you're gonna ruin it. But once you've got that layer of wax and we've got that layer of wax protecting it as well, and we're using a really fine sandpaper, 1,200 grit. Um, this is the flex of it from Bunnings. They're like two or $3, really, really affordable. They come in a roll and we're just really gently, I'm just letting the sandpaper do the work, then it down. As I said, because we have stripped this, the timber's lacking that hydration and it's drinking up all of that oil. So we're just lightly sanding it to help knock back any of those fibers that have decided to stand up so that we have that nice smooth finish, the same as our top. That's it, so, so easy. Take your cloth again. Kind of rub it around those edges. Make sure, because otherwise I'll forget those bits. I always do. I always forget something on when I do a piece. Normally something like that is what I'd forget. And then we're just gonna give it a nice gentle buff all the way down. Remove all that excess and you guys, I know you probably can't see that shine. It's very, very subtle, but it's just enough. Um, and it's so beautiful. And that timber's just come to life. You can really, really see the grain in the timber now, which is just beautiful. And it's really brought out these colors in the inlay as well. This cabinet's just, it's one of those pieces. I'm so in love with it. There's only ever a few pieces that I really like, and I like every piece that I do, but sometimes you just get those pieces that are, oh, baby, um, that are really, really, really special. I'm getting kicked in the ribs. Um, and this is just one of those pieces. 
It really, really is. I could never, ever cover this with paint. I really couldn't. And I love this piece because it's a really nice combination of restoration while still bringing it into modern day and making it one of those pieces that will last another 50, 100 years. And this is what I love about what I do. So nice buff again. Run your hand over it if there's any bits that are still feeling a little bit waxy. Buff them again. And there you have it. That's Pure Eco's Hemp Self. Oh, it feels amazing on there. And our table's now dry as well, so I can show you that. Let me just, sorry, mind my hand. Oops. Okay. Now, turn the camera. Can you see all those colours in that inlay? Isn't it beautiful? It really is. The quality of it is just stunning. You just, modern day furniture, you just don't get detail like that. And I'll show you the top as well. So we've just got, it's just, it's such stunning timber. It's brought out that incredible natural color. It's hydrated and protected it. Isn't it beautiful? All right, let's go back over to this table now. It is nice and dry and it's ready for its wax. So we've popped on our coat of uh, Whisper Stain and Glaze, which has just taken out some of that redness. So we'll still have a little bit of red, but it won't be as red as what it was. So let me pop you back in here. Oops, hang on. That one. And let's, oops. Can't get back in now. <laughs> there we go, right. Let's look at this table. I'm gonna bring you up just a little bit. You can see what we're doing. It's always helpful, isn't it? All right, so we're looking really, really nice. Let's grab our wax. Now, you just have to wait for your stain or your paint to be dry. You don't have to wait overnight or any particular amount of time. It's just got to be fully dry. This is dry. It feels really nice. Um, so, let's pop our wax over our stain. So, because we've got the whisper on here, our timber's not going to go that real red colour that it was going when we originally put the, um, when we sprayed it down with some water. Okay, so you remember how dark that was. If you didn't see that bit, go back and watch the start of the video. But this is the wax over this. So this, the wisp is keeping it nice and light, which is what we want. While still showcasing some of those beautiful pinky tones without being too, too heavy, too dark and showcasing the beautiful timber underneath that stain. So if you've watched me for a while, you know Stain & Glaze, one of my favorite products. And I love timber as well. So um, anytime that I can, if I can preserve any of the timber on a piece, I will. It is very, very rare that you'll see me paint an entire piece. Very rare. I don't think it, it's maybe happened a handful of times. Um, and it's only ever happened if the piece wasn't real timber um, or the timber was so badly damaged that it just wasn't savable. So I will always try to keep as much timber as I can. Um, timber top, painted base, one of my favourite combinations. I just think it goes really nicely. Um, I also like how hard wearing a timber top is compared to a painted top. Now this hemp oil, the stain and glaze has got a built-in sealer as well. So we've already got that bit of durability. And now the hemp cells is just adding that extra layer as well, which extra layer of protection never ever hurts. 
So again, we popped it on all over with the sandpaper. We're gonna give it a really, really light sand. It'll feel a little bit rough. And I do this over every single timber piece. You do not have to lightly sand over, um, over paint. If you popped your wax over paint, you don't need to. You can if you want, but you don't need to. But over timber, it's a really, really nice way just to knock back those fibers and give you that really lovely smooth finish. So we're just going with the direction of the timber. No pressure on my sandpaper. We're just letting the sandpaper do the work so we can get that really nice smooth finish that we love. So every single bit of timber that I have, I do this to some degree. Whether I'm using wax or an oil or, or the hemp oil, I always lightly sand them once I first applied that. It really does make a difference in the finish. And now we're just gonna buff it again with our cloth. I'm gonna give that initial wipe down to remove most of it. Like so. And then I'm just gonna rotate my cloth. And just rotating it just helps ensure that you're picking up all the wax and you're not just sort of spreading it out more and more and more as well. You wanna spread it out, but you also wanna make sure that you're picking up all that excess. How beautiful is that? So the whispers just been just enough to take out some of that redness. Just enough, so it's not quite as dark. You could certainly go another layer. Um, if you really, really wanted to get rid of the redness, I would actually recommend bleaching the timber and then going in with the whisper or going in with a completely different color. Um, you could go a lot darker as well, but I like, I like trying to showcase the natural timber and the natural timber's color without it being too heavy and too dark. And I feel like this just goes really, really nicely with the blues and the finish, the paint finish that I've chosen. So that's it. Feeling beautiful, always rub your hand over your surface. If anywhere feels like it needs a little bit more of a buff, give it a second buff. And then again, I will come back tomorrow. I'll get this staged and listed. I'm gonna do that right now. Um, staged and listed for sale now, but um, I won't let this go until tomorrow after I've been able to give it a second buff. I always go in and give my pieces another quick, quick buff the next day. Sometimes you'll find a piece is just soaked in all that wax or all that oil and um, it'll feel quite rough and just like it needs another coat. If that's the case, go in with a second coat. Um, but probably like 95, 90, 95% of the time, one coat is all you need. Look at that. Two stunning, stunning pieces that I am completely obsessed with. So that is Pure Red Co's hemp cell and my jar doesn't even have a stick on it, so <laughs> that's all it says on it. Um, so I can't even show you what the um, packaging completely looks like, but they do come in these tins, um, which are, once you've finished your wax, completely reusable. Up on the website now, $35 pre-order. Um, and they're arriving in the next couple of weeks. Thank you all so much for watching, um, for tuning in. Again, if you've got any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm always happy to help where I can. Um, again, you can find us online at thepainterbrush.com.au or you can find us here in Bendigo, uh, Victoria at 37 High Street, Eagle Fork. We're on the corner, a couple doors down from Subway. You can't miss us. Have a lovely Thursday and I will see you all in our next live. Thanks everyone.